ஸ்ரீ சத்யபோதா டிஸ்மே அபவுட் ராமச்சந்திரா ஹிஸ் சப்மிஷன் டு லார்ட் ராமா ஸ்ரீ சத்யபோதா வாஸ் அவெயிட்டிங் த அரைவல் ஆஃப் சம் ஒன் அவுட் சைட் த ஸ்ரீமட் ஹி ஹெட் ப்ரே டு ஸ்ரீ திக்விஜய ராமா பிஃபோர் கம்மிங் தேர் இன் எக்ஸ்பெக்டேஷன் ஆஃப் தேட் பர்சன் ராமச்சந்திரா சீயிங் த சுவாமி அவுட் சைட் த ஸ்ரீமட் அப்ரோச் டிம் இன் கிரேட் ஹேஸ்ட் Why are you in such a hurry to come to the Srimad? Swami, when I thought about you, I could not restrain myself. And when I saw you, I could not check my speed. So I came running. Yes, after all you have come to my place, said the Swami rather meaningfully. Swami, what are you telling please? I am not going to say anything indirectly. I am asking you point blank. whether you are agreeable to occupying my seat if you are left there is none with so much learning and knowledge i have pondered over the matter seriously are you not agreeable to the proposal why are you keeping mum when young you had been wondering why you were born and when you will get liberated your father had recounted to me all those and had exulted at your being a prodigious child should you not pass on to others whatever you have realized and acquired knowledge about occupying a pita and doing such good will be far better than putting in individual effort to that end is it not swami you are telling me something very lofty I do not have that kind of free hand to give my consent instantly. I have my spouse and two children besides my parents to be looked after, replied Ramachandra with great perturbation. Well, you may go home now and make your family members agree to this. Come back successfully. Ramachandra with discomfiture and his usual briskness eluding him, reached home and entered inside without even seeing his wife standing in the garden why have you returned immediately ramachandra amma it is he hesitated and lakshmi bai seeing that from the garden was flabbergasted and when ramachandra broke the news to his mother rather reluctantly she burst out in a wail what i feared is indeed coming true madhvacharya hearing that cry of grief came there and told his dumbfounded daughter in law why are you standing outside please come in escorting her inside bharti what happened why are you crying madhvacharya asked his wife and when ramachandra appraised him the matter he exclaimed what a blessing and ray privilege it is bharti bharti bai with a grieving heart retorted to it saying you brought your daughter in law inside but you're sending your son out is this justified bharati when our own child is rising in status should we not be joyous about it how can you be mournful you may be happy about it and so too the public even to our swami it may be heartening but for our 18 year old daughter in law standing the, before us how can it be exhilarating what is going to be her future life with two young children what can she do has anyone thought about it no my son is only raghavendra even if his name has been changed as ramachandra guru raja we were grieving about our barrenness and performed a rigorous seva to you for an offspring please have pity on us now is it for lakshmi being left alone with two young children that you blessed the birth of a son to us have you graced us a son only to cause his leaving us all like what you did when you took to sanyasa and parted your wife saraswati bai and son lakshmi narayana our son is just 23 Of course he can take to monkhood and preach dharma to the world he has the knowledge and capacity for that but should you not be considerate about what his young wife and children will have to encounter in the rest of their lives 
Bharati Bai erupted like a volcano. Bharati, why do you think on those lines? You are under the impression that things are in our hands. We were childless for 22 years and if that state had continued, there would have been no occasion for you to talk like this. God gave us a son as a gift and now he is calling him for divine service. Sri Guru Raja facilitated our having the divine gift of a son and it is he who is now orchestrating our son occupying the Pita as a Guru through Sri Satyabodha. You must appreciate that it is his grace. Before consoling me, you should seek the decision of Lakshmi about the matter. I do not even have the courage to see her face. Ramachandra at that point of time moved towards Lakshmi and asked her, What have you to tell about this please? With inaudible sobs choking her throat, Lakshmi managed to tell, Swami, it is my duty to accept whatever you do, kneeling down and touching Ramachandra's feet in reverence. Both Lakshmi and Ramachandra could not control their grief then, and Lakshmi amidst her sobs, Try to console her husband, saying, Please control yourself. I am there to look after your parents and the children. At the same time, reflecting within herself, Swami, I shall not be able to see this charming face of yours after you take to sannyasa. When all others would be seeing this divine countenance, I alone may not be able to catch sight of it. She then got up and stood in front of her husband, controlling her heartache. Lakshmi, your sacrifice is peerless and as a mark of my appreciation of it, the merit or punya to accrue from my first day's puja after taking to Sanyasa Ashrama will be dedicated to you, Lakshmi. Ramachandra, you please start at once. The Pita Tipati will be waiting for you for your positive gesture. Madhvacharya prompted his son in a low tone, going near him. Ramachandra fondled his children with a shower of kisses and the innocent young ones, unable to comprehend anything, clung to their father affectionately as was their wont. Seeing that heart-rending scene, the entire household wept with uncontrollable grief, taking to Sanyasa Ashrama at a very young age, leaving one's spouse, children and the other family members is indubitably something that cannot be endured by all as it requires very strong willpower. Ramachandra, who had obtained permission for it, started treading his way towards the Srimad. But there, at the Srimad, a problem had cropped up, causing some embarrassment. Sri Satyabodha had appraised the pandits and the local dignitaries about his desire to confess sainthood on Ramachandra and there was approbation from the elite group for the Swami's proposition. But one member of the Srimad, however, raised his lone voice against such a move by the Swami. Yes, it was Setu Ramachar, Lakshmi Bhai's father and divan of the Srimad. He burst aloud. All of you seem to be keen on Ramachandra taking to Sanyasa Ashrama. But have you thought for a while about the fate of my daughter? She is just 18 and what a bleak future it should be for her. No, I shall not certainly give my consent for this. And it evoked a stunning silence in the Srimad for some time. My son-in-law has gone home only to get the approval of his family members. I know my daughter will not certainly agree to this. Setu Ramachar vented aloud, even as Ramachandra was entering the streamer silently and in an unruffled manner. Oh, you have come. I hope my daughter has not agreed and you too are not giving your acquiescence, said Setu Ramachar with wrath in his tone. But Ramachandra walked calmly and stood in front of Sri Satyabodha. He then prostrated before the pontiff and getting up, told him in a humble manner, Swami, everybody in my family has accepted my taking to sannyasa and I have come here with a carte blanche. 
Seturam Achar, on hearing these words, took to his heels from there, crying aloud. This is nothing uncommon. In the beginning, it will be like that only. I was concerned how you would be getting your parents' concurrence, particularly your mother's. It is Sri Hari's grace that you could get the nod from your mother and your wife. It's all your blessing, Swami, submitted Ramachandra, prostrating again in front of the pontiff. The Pitatipati then announced, Listen, all of you, it is proposed to initiate Ramachandra into Sanyasa Ashrama and make him the Uttradhikari of this mutt. In affirmation of that, the Mantraksha, soon the auspicious date for it will be made known. And in affirmation of that, Mantrakshata is being given to him now. His Holiness then took the sacred rice in his hand, meditated for some time, and stayed at the face of Ramachandra standing before him. Strangely, without putting the sacred rice in his hands, he stopped for a minute and closely watched again the face of Ramachandra. The Swami's hesitation being conspicuous, the entire assemblage thought why the pontiff was withholding the offering of the Mantrakshita to Ramachandra. And just at that moment, the Swami withdrew his hand and put the sacred thing back in its container. Ramachandra was taken aback and looked at the Swami with perplexity. The devotees present there keenly watched the Swami and Ramachandra, shifting their looks between the two. Sri Satyabodha then went inside his private confines with a careworn face without uttering a single word. The pontiff's attendant then announced that everyone could go home and come the next day. The entire Srimat at that time presented a lustreless look and Ramachandra was still standing there. The disciple who went inside again came out and informed Ramachandra, The Swami has asked you also to go home and come tomorrow, which baffled him. He being unable to comprehend all that had happened there in a jiffy, as it were. With no other choice, he then returned home with umpteen thoughts crossing his mind. Setu Madhvachar, who heard about the happenings, was also surprised. Though he could feel a sense of happiness that his daughter's wedlock would remain unaffected. After the devotees had left the streamer, Swami Satyabodha went to the place where the puja vigrahas had been kept and lamented, Ram Rama, why have you done like this? What an accomplished disciple Sri Ramachandra is with immense knowledge. He was born after intense seva to Sri Guru Raja. O oh Lord, should he be facing this kind of a thing? I had the confidence and hope that he would adorn the Pita and become famous like Sri Raghavendra Guru. Is it for him such a fate awaits? O oh Rama, why did you not give this message to me yesterday itself? If you had done that, I would not have broached the subject with Ramachandra or the others. Poor Ramachandra, how much efforts he would have taken to convince his mother and his spouse, offering them solace. At least that could have been avoided. As per the enlightenment that I had from you, even supposing sannyasa is not conferred on him, his mother and wife may rejoice over that. But even that jubilation is to be for a while only. O Rama, I am unable to know what should be done next. Grieved Sri Satyabodha, venting out his feelings to the Lord. While Sri Satyabodha was thus disputing with Lord Sri Rama, Ramachandra reached home, jaded and cheerless. Madhvacharya, seeing him, asked him with great concern, What happened? Why have you come away? When he was about to drop Mantrakshita in my hands, the Swami suddenly took his hand back without proffering the sacred rice. Later, he informed that I could go home and come tomorrow, explained Ramachandra, stunning everyone present there, none being in a position to understand the significance of that unexpected happening. Yes, 
how could the swami have told the actual enlightenment that he had sri satyabodha had the extraordinary power to know about the person standing in front of him if he just held the mantrakshita in his hand and meditated for a few moments looking at the face of the person standing in front of him it was when he stayed at ramachandra in that manner that he came to know something about him it's only after such enlightenment that the swami hesitated about conferring sanyasa ashrama on ramachandra and restrained from proffering the mantrakshita to ramachandra withdrawing his hand at that moment whatever be the conflicts within the mind sanyasis have a schedule of duties to be performed and so the swami completed that day's puja in the routine way even at that time the pontiff did not divulge anything about the strange happening the evening too passed in that manner and at night sri satyabodha could not have a wink of sleep unable to bear the torment he prayed to the lord soulfully rama i have asked ramachandra to come here tomorrow please enlighten me what explanation could be given to him i submit that you should show me the way for this please save me from the embarrassment and the ordeal of my having to tell with whatever i have been enlightened about yes when satyabodha was about to give mantrakshita to ramachandra the flash of enlightenment that sri hari had caused to occur in him was that ramachandra's life in the mundane world was limited to another 15 days only and coming to know that the pita tipati was caught in a quagmire so to say his mind struggling to extricate himself itself from the awkward situation of having to avoid granting monkhood to ramachandra and what happened on the next day follows in the next chapter